So another, um, just a really short lesson, um, just a kind of idea to get you to start thinking um, uh, just about your own technique, your own guitar playing a little bit more. So I'd spoken before about left hand pressure and how much you're actually pushing down the guitar neck. For example, uh, everybody knows the pain of learning your F chord and if you've ever tried to show a beginner how to play an F chord, it's it's the most difficult thing in the earth, isn't it? Keeping one finger straight and bending other fingers, you know. When you bend straighten one finger, the other ones want to go straight. And when you bend another finger, the other ones all want to bend. So you feel as if you're pushing in really hard, for example. But if you want to be um, a guitar player who can play for a long time, who can maybe play um, like fluidly, or even just be conscious of how you're playing then you've got to be aware of left hand finger pressure so at Freak Guitar Camp recently and um, the guitar player well, currently formerly the guitar player for Megadeth um, Kiko he was doing a thing where he was playing a scale run but he was just playing it like really really muted I was like, ah, it's like the first guitar player rock guitar player I've ever seen well I suppose a metal guitar player um, speak about something like that because it is more kind of a classical thing I've injured my hands, I've had the Bible bump in the back of my hands, um, I've had strange, repetitive strains, I've done th everything the wrong way, and then eventually after um, trying to basically learn um, some different passages and stuff, I realised if I want to keep playing forever, I've got to learn a new way of playing. So that's not to say you can't push in hard when you want to, but you should be aware of it. So to fall on left hand pressure, the other obvious thing, um, well it might might not be obvious if you've never thought about it before, is your right hand pressure, whether that be with um, your fingers or your plectrum. Now, with your fingers, uh, pressure directly affects the tone. If you ever listen to a classical guitar player, um, the different kind of the tom ra and the different tones they can get out the guitar using their nails and the pressure is kind of all about that. But for a guitar player, if you're maybe playing through distortion, then you might be less aware. Some guys might be really thumping, thumping the strings, you know, but if you really need to explore what's going to be comfortable for you, this might be the thing that's been holding you back forever, um, and maybe accomplishing certain things. And then you can actually, if you can learn to play soft as well as hard, um, or maybe if you're an incredibly soft player, maybe it'd be good to actually um, play a little bit harder. You're increasing your dynamic range, which in electric guitar is quite limited. If you've ever heard um, a saxophone, for example, in the flesh, a saxophone's an incredibly loud acoustic instrument. There's an acoustic guitar, there's a much more limited range between um, soft and loud. Now, if you're an electric guitar player like me, um, well, I just consider myself a guitarist, but I play electric guitar a lot, if you're maybe plugged into a 100 watt Marshall or a 100 watt amp, you know, and you get to turn it up really loud, then you have a lot of dynamic range. But generally people um, don't, and if you're playing with a lot of distortion, I tend to play with a cleaner sound, then that uh, actually physically compresses the sound, so it's limited, so the dynamic actually comes out more as a tonal thing. So. If you're using a lot of distortion, you can actually play really softly and the notes will still pop out. So if you maybe go and play an acoustic guitar then, you might find it quite difficult. So it's good to explore all these different things. I think as a guitar player, it's good to be aware of um, different instruments and just what your hands are doing. So um, there's not really any great exercise to do this to start with. Later on, you can start trying to accent notes once you get to grips with it. You know, maybe like if you're doing like the old three note per string scale. You could accent the first note in every string, for example. Uh, you could accent different groups through the scale, so you could accent every four. 